In this video, I'm going to tell you where I find my minis for miniature agnostic games. These days, I like to talk about miniature agnostic games a lot. If you've been following me on Twitch, which you should, I sit there and I paint miniatures and such like that and answer questions in the chat twice a week. Um, but I also talk about it here a bit on the channel as well. I talked to just recently the last two Why I Like It games are both miniature agnostic games. You can check those videos out. Ciao. And uh, the concept behind it is just something that's very uh, interesting to me as a miniature player, as a modeler, all that kind of stuff. And I've been doing a lot of it, and you may have been hearing it here. So just a quick recap in case you've not heard me talk about it. What is a miniature agnostic game? Miniature agnostic games are games, miniature games, miniature war games, that don't have an affiliated uh, miniature line attached to them. Um, Warhammer 40,000 is not a miniatures agnostic game. You can certainly play it with whatever models that you want within reason. Obviously, if you're playing at a tournament, the tournament organizer might have something to say about that. But when you and your friends are playing a game like that down in the basement, use whatever you want. But certain games, miniature agnostic games, um, they're not trying to stick it to the man. They just don't have miniatures attached to them. So it's almost like, I don't want to say it's a warning, but it is to let you know you're going to have to come up with your own miniatures for this. And I'm not saying you're going to have to sculpt your own miniatures. You're going to want to uh, use miniatures from maybe other companies. There are a lot of companies out there that make miniatures that don't have a game at all. There's a lot of 3D printed stuff. There's all kinds of stuff like that. And I've been using all those different types of things in my miniature agnostic games. And I get asked by a lot of folks recently, so where do you get your models for these games? Now, we're going to quickly need to set some terms here. There's two main types of miniature agnostic games. One type is truly open to any kind of models, and they generally use something like build-your-own type stats. Um, very frequently, it'll be a situation of like, okay, you're gonna, you've got a model here, and it's obviously wearing heavy armor, so you can go into the game system and be like, okay, well, heavy armor costs this many more points. And he's got a, a short stubby gun, not a sniper rifle, so you use this. And so you kind of go through on each model, and that's why usually these games are also a skirmish and not build your entire giant army. They are generally designed so that you're going through and you're kind of getting to kind of pick the stats and everything for each model. And then, you know, they can either fit to the model or you can kind of design something yourself ahead of time in your head and then go get some models and make them work. But it's not so much like where you're going a, at an army list like you do in a lot of games where there's maybe a codex or a battle tome or a, just an army book or an army list or anything like that. Those types of games, even within the realm of uh, miniature agnostic, you know, games are known as alternate rules games. OK, so. Um, they're generally designed to work with miniatures that you probably already own. They usually come with like army lists and all that kind of stuff. And very frequently those games or those lists are based off of popular models that are already out there that again, you may already own. Um, one page rules is a big one of those. It's designed so that if you've already got a bunch of Warhammer 40,000 models or Age of Sigmar models, but you're tired of playing in that particular rule set, either of those, you can use something from one page rules. And then you can be looking at the army list here and be like, oh, this is interesting. And then eventually you're like, oh yeah, that's, that's Tau. Obviously that you're not calling it Tau. You can't call it Tau. That would be, you get in trouble, but obviously these are Tau. So if I have Tau, I use these models in this list and we can kind of go from there. So there's the two main types of miniatures agnostic games, ones that are completely free form and build your own and everything as far as stats and stuff are concerned. And other ones where they're like very frequently like, well, you got a bunch of Star Wars guys. These are stats for Star Wars guys. These are stats for, you know, 40K guys. These are stats for that kind of stuff. So whichever one you want to play, that's, you can still find good models to work with them. But when you're doing the completely go off, you know, off the, uh, the, the, the script and do your own, then you're going to have to look for specific models that you might want to use. As with most things uh, in the world today, the first place you need to start is Google. I typed in sci-fi miniatures as an example, and I found all kinds of things. Now, I'm going to try to put a ton of these links down into the description below, but I might miss some. And if I do, well, you know, you could use Google. When I typed this in, several STL sellers immediately popped up to the top. And these days, if you're going to be searching for any kind of miniatures on Google, you're probably going to find a lot of STL folks out there. STLs are the type of uh, files that you get for 3D printing. Now, 
If you've got a 3D printer or potentially you have a friend with a 3D printer who will print for you, or you should pay them, by the way, then in the world of miniature agnostic games, the world is your oyster. Actually, I typed oyster into myminifactory.com and I didn't actually find anything for the most part. So if you're, you're probably going to have to kitbash your own oyster people if that's what you're looking for for your game. My Mini Factory is generally the very first place that I go when searching for miniatures of nearly any kind, uh, sci-fi, fantasy, uh, modern, uh, post-apocalyptic, whatever. When Vince and I were first working on Rain and Hell, I went to My Mini Factory and just started searching for demons and found a bunch of stuff. And then um, down, you know, bought those, downloaded them, had my good friend print them, and then I painted them and then took pictures of them and then sent them off to an artist. Um, I'm going to put a link in the bottom as well, but it's artistsempire.com. Had uh, him digitally kind of overpaint them, uh, you know, the, the, the photos that I sent, putting in like smoke and grit and, and, and scary whatnot and stuff like that in the background. And then that's what we put into the book. And it was just super easy. You could use those same models for gameplay as well, which we've done as, as easily as well. However, there are tons of people making weird and amazing STL files for miniatures these days. Again, typing uh, like fantasy miniature STL into Google brings up dozens of great places to get files for 3D printing. Um, you can get stuff. You can choose to support your favorite STL creators via like Patreon, you know, like one of those kind of things. Or Tribes. Tribes is actually kind of like Patreon, but it's run through My Mini Factory and it's, it's a little bit different, but it's kind of the same thing as the Patreon thing. Or you can just buy the miniatures a la carte, either from the creators themselves directly if they do that, or many of them also work with My Mini Factory and other places as well to sell them through there. And then, of course, there's also Hero Forge. If you've ever heard of Hero Forge, it's a place that was originally designed where you would go and custom make your own mini right there in a web page. You could just go through and pick different things. I want a, a, you know, a, a male a robot with a, this gun wearing a dress and a funny hat and whatever, and you could build all this stuff, and then they would print it and send it to you. But now they'll also just sell you the STL file so either you or your friend or whatever can print it yourself. It gives you an incredible amount of creativity for things that you would want to use for your miniature playing. But let's say you don't have a 3D printer or even access to one. Well, then you can do what I've done quite a bit over the last year or so, and that is use Etsy. I actually made a video about how you can use Etsy to buy a lot of stuff for wargaming. Um, Pachow. I think it was about a year, year and a half ago that I made that video. Very frequently, if you find a model, uh, an STL file, on, let's say, My Mini Factory, uh, you can take the name of that file, drop it into Etsy, and there's probably somebody on Etsy who's already printing it. If there's not, there are plenty of people also on Etsy who are just like, send me the STLs that you buy, and I will print them and mail them back to you. So there's a lot of different options, even if you don't have access to that stuff, and if you want to do that and go down that 3D printing STL kind of world for your miniature agnostic gaming. But what if none of that 3D printing stuff appeals to you at all? You just you, you want to have specifically plastic or metal or resin, not 3D printed resin, but you know what I'm saying, miniatures, and that's what you want. Then altering what you already can find or buy, kit bashing and all that stuff with well-known companies' miniatures, you know, like you, there's a lot of things that you can do. You could take a normal Space Marine and just get rid of all of the skulls, just sand them off or cut them off with an with exacto and all that kind of stuff, paint them up. And now it's just a normal sci-fi guy who happens to have power armor. You can do a head swap, do a weapon swap to make their weapon not necessarily look so badass and all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of things that you can do. Honestly, just taking models you might already have or have already bought or you have like you bought them and there's like three extras in there, something like that. And just doing simple head swaps or weapon swaps can make them look like completely different models. I've done that a ton and it's a lot of fun. Um, when I'm doing that, I like to use heads very frequently from companies that are designed that just make stuff like that, just like, like, like heads and, and sh shoulder pads and guns and stuff like that. So, uh, my favorite companies are, uh, let's see here, Anvil Industries or Anvil Industry, technically Puppets War, Cromlack, Spellcrow, companies like that. They sell, uh, poured resin, not 3d printed resin, uh, heads, weapons, um, swords, wings, jump packs. Uh, pretty much nearly anything else that you can think of. Having a whole bunch of those just ready to go for whenever you want to do a kit bash is really a good idea. And also, at any time when you are done building whatever you're building for whatever kind of miniature, there will probably be parts left over. Always clip those off the sprues and put them in something because that's what you want to dig through when you start doing a bunch of kit bashing. 
But what if I want more than just bits? You know, I need entire models for this miniature agnostic game that I'm not. I don't want to just like take a bunch of like, you know, GW stuff or Malifaux stuff and just swap some heads. I want like a totally new miniature line, something like that. Well, one thing you might want to take a look at is Reaper Miniatures. They have something called a figure finder. The figure finder is really cool because it allows you to go through and say, I want a woman uh, sci-fi with a rifle and it will just show you all of the literally thousands and thousands of miniatures that Reaper has made over the years and show you the ones that fit that category. And then it may not even be something that they have in production anymore, but you might be able to find it on eBay. You might be able to find it at one of your local stores, something like that. But very frequently, just being able to go through and pick that kind of categorization really helps you to figure out what Reaper has available because they've been making miniatures for a very long time. So you might find something you, you want to at least even start with there and then kit bash from there. Another one of my big favorites for a company that just makes plastic kits and doesn't really have a game or anything like that, but they make a lot of really cool, interesting plastic kits, War Games Atlantic. I have purchased from them, let's see here, a bunch of sci-fi dudes that are pretty cool. Uh, some World War One guys that I'm going to kit bash soon for uh, kind of a weird World War One game. I got some lizard men from them that come with like swords and shields, but they also come with like machine guns and gas masks as well on lizard men, which I think is super cool. Their kits are really neat, uh, and I've been really enjoying the stuff that I've been seeing coming out of War Games Atlantic. There's also North Star military figures. You probably know them as the folks that make the plastic Frostgrave models, um, wizards, soldiers, cultists, barbarians kobolds. There's a bunch more, I think, too, as well. And then for Stargrave, they've got three kits that are out now, like mercenaries, crew members, something else. And then there's a new kit that's coming very soon as well. They also make Oathmark miniatures, which I've got some goblins and skeletons from that group. There's tons of different models that come out of North Star that are plastics, nice plastics with lots and lots and lots of options. And again, when you're done with that kit, clip all the rest of the stuff that you didn't use, because you're going to use it later. Not only that, WizKids. Um, WizKids has been around for a long time. You know them from like Hero Clicks and things like that. They have a huge line over the last four or five years of pre-built and pre-primed miniatures for like Dungeons and Dragons and stuff like that, but also some sci-fi things as well. And now they're even getting into the kind of on the sprue miniatures business and they're starting with fantasy miniatures. So they're called frameworks and you can actually clip them apart like, you know, the kind of models that you're used to from other companies and uh, build models from there. That's another place to get your, at least at this point, fantasy miniature fix. The one thing that people do get sometimes fussy about with their miniatures is scale, especially when you are mixing and matching um, models from different companies and things like that. Some companies like to produce models in what they're known as true scale, where everything seems to be relatively proportional. Um, heroic scale is something you see coming out of companies like Games Workshop and everybody's wrists are this big around for some reason, you know, that kind of stuff. But the fact of the matter is just because your models aren't the same height doesn't mean they're not the same scale. My wife is like 5'2", and I'm 6'2", and we're technically the same scale. I'm just taller than she is. Kevin Hart and Dwayne Johnson, that they're technically the same scale because they both live on Earth in reality, and that's how scale works, kind of. But one is very, very bigger than the other one. Tactical Space Marines and Primaris Space Marines, they're the same scale, right? And they're very different in height. That's never bothered anyone, right? So don't worry about scale too much, or if it really bothers you, stick with models all from the same company, you know, so that they should hopefully all be roughly the same scale. Generally, that's the way they work. Or if you're doing a 3D printing thing, you can actually adjust the heights and the proportions to some degree of the models as you print them, so they all come out and everyone's exactly the same height. So I hope that this has given you a jumping off point to help you find great miniatures for your miniatures agnostic games. Because like, seriously, Google is your absolute very best friend. You can find so much just typing in fantasy miniatures, uh, cyberpunk miniatures, you know, whatever you're looking for. Also, check your, your, your gaming store, your local gaming store. They may have weird models that don't get sold frequently or are kind of in, in the back or something like that. And you may have never heard of those companies before or maybe not seen those particular models. And they could be something else that you could use as well. Do you have some miniature agnostic model sources that I didn't mention in the video? Drop a comment below and let everybody know. I'd love to see the creativity in the wargaming hobby uh, just like expand. And I really hope that this helps spur your creativity. And if you can, drop a like below. It really helps the channel. Thanks for watching.